the best way to learn something is by developing a playful attitude towards it. Now that you completed the first two steps, I would really recommend you take a break and play around with this particular code that we already have. What would happen if I change the URL pattern to login.do? Would the thing continue working? What would happen if I change the JSP to a non-existing JSP? If I change it to login1.jsp? If you are new to Eclipse, then you can try and play around with the imports as well. How is Eclipse getting the import directly when I go somewhere and type in control space? So I went into servlet exception, press control space and the import automatically comes in. How does it happen? Try and play around with these things. There are a lot of new things that we are talking about in this particular steps, in the last couple of steps especially. And the best way to get good knowledge about them is play around with it. Play around with the URLs, play around with the JSPs, play around with the login servlet and see what more knowledge you can gain through that. We have configured the Tomcat plugin to automatically restart or reload the context if there's a change. That's why you would see that when I change something in here, I'm changing, changing login.do to login1.do and pressing save, then you would see that the con in the console that the context will be reloaded. You know, so now you see that the context is reloaded. Same thing, if I change anything in the servlet, login1.jsp for example, the context would be reloaded. This would save you a lot of time. Because of this, you don't really need to restart the server each time. So you don't need to stop and start the server whenever you make changes in the servlets. The only time you need to change, restart the server is when you create new servlets or make major changes in there. For all the minor changes, those would be automatically loaded into the Tomcat server. For example, now let's get it back to login.do and I'm leaving the JSP as login1.jsp. As we know, the login1.jsp is not present. We only have a login.jsp, we don't have a login.1.jsp. So what would happen? Aha, we get a HTTP status 404. It says, webinf login1.jsp not found. The requested resource is not available. That's the error. So it means that the change we have done is deployed. That's one thing. The other important thing is the HTTP status. Along with the request, when I send a request to a server, I get a response back. One of the major things which is present in a response is something called the response status. In here, when I have a page not found, I got a 404. This means it's a page not found. Let's change it back to login.jsp. Wait for the context to reload. Yeah, it's done and do a refresh, you'd see that the response status is 200. So that's another important thing, the response status. The response status for a successful response is 200. Usually it's 200. And when there's a failure, the response status can be a different number. When it's a page not found, it's usually 404. That's why 404 is a famous status. A lot of Techies use 404 to, to signify that something is not really found. In this small chapter, we just wanted to take a pause and look around and see what other things that you can learn about the application that we have already developed. I will see you in the next step.